Okay, I've seen this video here, Wing Chun sparring with boxing and martial arts. An eight-year-old video from a good friend is a Wing Chun. Head over to him and also shout out to this man. He's doing a great job to promoting traditional martial arts with some real world like scenarios and some thought. So let's have a look at this, what we kind of see here. That's an awesome intro, man. You see that it's a little bit older because nobody's doing something like this anymore. But it looks cool, really. It's a tactical combat Wing Chun lesson 25. Okay, let's see what you learn. And it's, you got the jam cross down, yeah? No. You know, so, all right, three, two, <laughs> one. All right, you two. That's this the man. Day 25. Now keep in mind, the rest of the month, we're going to do law enforcement defensive tactics stuff. Um, uh, Kevin's going to help me out with that. I put surveys out on LinkedIn and whatnot. I asked, you know, cops, hey, should I put stuff out for defensive tactics? Everyone's like, no, no, it's a secret. Well, to be 100% honest, bad guys train harder than we do. So there's nothing they don't already know. So, and, and plus it's good. And departments don't pay for shit anymore. So if I'm going to give free stuff out for a week, I, I hope you take it. I hope you embrace it. Um, Kevin brought up a brief. That's a really good point that you made here. It's maybe just in a side sentence, but people expect knowledge for like nothing so you have here the youtube scene so to speak where you have all the fucking knowledge from like the whole world for free and people are not used to pay a teacher or somebody that shows them some stuff anymore i think at least that is my perspective on things so that you show free stuff like this here like tactics like uh, combinations or martial arts knowledge is really awesome and also a little bit counterproductive for those who are like teachers or want to be a teacher and do this full time keep in mind well, tell, tell, me what I mean, so, tell us yeah a lot of boxers that have come out and said that wing chun men never use real boxers uh when they're demonstrating their techniques somebody that is true stick move bob weave all that kind of stuff wing chun guys don't use somebody like that usually they use classic another wing chun guy who will throw a static punch of some kind so my question to dominic was I, i've been in the ring before i'm not a very good man very good i'm an amateur but i've been in the ring before i know how to move in the ring i know somewhat of what i'm doing um going up against somebody like me what is he going to do uh, especially with my you know limited albeit yes but uh still boxing skill i do have some boxing skills. i've said it before if somebody goes in boxing class and box for three months at boxer so you got a you know, professional fighter versus a boxer. We're just talking about the boxing stands. Um, what I won't do, and this is, so what this is, this lesson's gonna be about is bridging that gap. This is what Wing Chun guys are infamous for failing at miserably, because we do this. <laughs> so Wing Chun works great when you get here. But the problem is 90% of the Wing Chun out there, I have not been seeing them be able to get here, okay? So first off, what we don't do in Wing Chun is, we don't take the static stance. If I have somebody who's coming up and he's throwing those things, Actually, we'll we'll just work through it. You know, we haven't you know we haven't done this yet, so let's see how I respond. Hopefully, I'll keep my teeth, and we'll see what happens. Oh yeah. This what we are seeing here is literally the best kind of sparring, in my opinion, that you can do in traditional martial arts. Because there's a couple of reasons for this. It is good when you have boxing gloves. So let me just. Let's um, switch the scene here. So, <clears throat> it is good that you train with boxing gloves, with 10 ounce gloves, with MMA, 4 ounce, 6 ounce gloves, yes, but in traditional martial arts, you have certain techniques that require you to like make these movements here, or for example, little grabbing movements that you cannot perform that good with gloves. And also like something like a back fist, like um, a bomb sour, or a tan sour. When you do this, it doesn't have the impact that it would have without gloves because you have knuckles here. Just something like this here is already going to hurt. With gloves, there's literally almost no impact. This here, when you have the control, is really something good because it trains you to hit actually. And a lot of traditional martial arts, I think, lack this because of the fear to hit too much or they just don't want to hit people. But really martial arts is, one thing about martial arts is hitting people, right? We, I think we can agree on this. And this here, this like sparring type of thing where you are still in control, but it's 
chaotic. You don't say, okay, we're going to do a drilling technique, throw me a right one and then a left one and then a hook or an uppercut. This here is like the chaotic version of this. And this is really what traditional martial arts should do. You can use, for example, just like the small gloves, like the MMA gloves, if you're starting to get out or in this. What we do in our school is we start with the big gloves, with the boxing gloves, and then we move on to the MMA gloves and then to no gloves and do exactly this. But this is nothing for for beginners people, but because beginners people tend to either hit too fast or too strong because you want to learn with your partner you don't want to hurt them in the sparring environment and um when you do this then you need to make sure that you make your way up to this this is really this is fantastic this i really like this Yeah, what do you feel? You saw the first one, I caught a right, right in the face. He stuck that out, and I had that, but as he brought it back, I did cut, I caught him right in the face. But what happened after that was you flooded me with aggression type of thing. Can I do the same thing? Yeah, but if I'm boxing, which is not the same necessarily as a... A devastating arm, you know, okay. where, where you're trying to really hurt. Some, yes, boxing, you're trying to hurt somebody, but boxing's still a game, okay? And even though they've got the deadliest hands in the world, the way, to beat a, dangerous. the way to beat a boxer, in my opinion, is to flood them with techniques like what you were just doing. You're gonna get caught. You're absolutely gonna get caught by a boxer. Martin, uh, well, yeah, 100% sure. Too. You guys remember Martin from some of the videos? Martin's a skilled MMA guy. What? <laughs> How does a little wing do the same thing? He's like, oh shit! Yeah, 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 I see. Same thing, I caught a great hit. No, oh, that was a good one too. The first one coming in. What'd you feel? You see, it didn't, you see, it didn't look like it, he was hit hard. I, you barely saw it. But when you do barrel knuckle, when you don't have the gloves, man, just something light can already make damage and hurts. Yeah, exactly. That's also something that I recognize when I spar with my instructor. Because I don't have time. There's always something going on. Some hand is somehow always in my face or here. And the concept in Hungar is when the one hand is doing something, the other hand is doing the opposite. So when you would go down, the other hand would automatically go up, forward, backwards. I don't have figured it out yet, but I think this is a pretty good concept for exactly this, because you always have the counter movement, you always try to block on all the levels, on all three levels, somehow. And this is exactly what they are talking about, what he is talking about now. It's always something going on. Yeah, we'll get the critics who are saying, well, box will come in in a circle or whatnot, but make no mistake, you've got a skilled MMA fighter and a cop who knows how to sit there and move too. So my only game is, because I'm so short, I caught a pop from him and a pop from him, both right hands. So that means that there's not going to be some, he comes out punch, punch again. There's no fucking way in hell any of you who do Wing Chun think that you're going to be safe at this distance. <laughs> the first movement comes up, you better be coming up. Mitigate damage. If you take a hit, take a hit here versus all the way extended out. So again, my theory with, with the boxing, get the fuck in, stay in, don't give them time to breathe. Answer your question? Yeah. 
That was pretty good video, pretty good. I really love this kind of sparring and I really think that we need to make sure that this is spreading out. Traditional martial arts need to show that they also do something valuable because for fuck's sake, there's too much people who don't, in my opinion, don't do the right thing to promote it. It's about promotion because, man, what's happening on social media, that is how people receive traditional martial arts and decide whether or not they're picking it up or doing something else. With these words, check out my merch in the store. Check out Izo Wing Chun. Please subscribe to that man. He's doing a really fantastic job in promoting good Wing Chun, in my opinion, traditional Wing Chun and also applicable Wing Chun. Because, man, the whole Bruce Lee like thing, he was an actor, it looked good. I loved movies, but it's about fighting. See you in the next one.